With the most boring election campaign producing the most interesting election result, everyone seems to care all of a sudden. Hung parliament, independence, what does this all mean? If only there was some way for people that knew more than other people to tell those people what's what. Luckily there is. It's called Ask an Expert. My expert tonight is Zara Gazarian, an associate lecturer in politics and policy studies at Deakin Uni and co-author of Australian Politics for Dummies out now. Zara, thank you for coming on the program. Great to How be here. Going? Thanks for having me. Good. Are you, are you willing to take the audience questions they've asked? I love the audience at, questions. <laughs> good. We're in a bit of a crazy situation. Though. So people want, they need answers. So the first question, we'll get straight into it. Quentin from Nepotism Bay asks, my son-in-law is vying for a promotion at work where they're also going for a big contract at the moment and she's in a position of influence. Help? <laughs> well, does she hold the balance of power? That's the first uh, well, I'm not sure. question I think for her. I have a feeling this might be Quentin Bryce, the Governor General. <laughs> Just a little bit of a feeling. Just a bit of a feeling. Well, look, it's all in the matter of how these people deal with this issue. Um, the Governor General, of course, has a very powerful position, but they can't really do much without the advice of the Prime Minister of the day. So whilst it's uh, Seems like a good idea to intervene on behalf of someone or <laughs> something that you know. It's not going to well, work. Well, this is the thing, because they're saying Bill Shorten, who of course is, a, is quite a senior person in the Labor Party, uh, he's actually the son-in-law, because he married Quentin Bryce's daughter. Late last year. So is that even a legitimate sort of conflict of interest? Not really. Not really. I don't think it is. I don't think um, many people would see it that way, especially when we know that the Governor-General's role is so limited in Australian politics. It's not going to be a big one. So, uh, but like, where are we going to get to where she's actually going to have to step in? Uh, are we going to have to reach some sort of crisis point? Well, not really. I mean, what occurs now is the politicians work with one another. They try to organise deals. They horse trade. I hate that expression, but it's the expression that's been used. Go with it. It's fine. <laughs> <laughs> so they do horse trade and they do all these sorts of deals to try and get a majority. If they can get a majority, then the problem's solved. If they can't get a majority, then the Prime Minister of the day uh, must advise the, the Governor-General that no party has been able to get a majority and fresh elections must be called. But I must stress, that is the last resort. Bob from Queensland asks, I'm usually a bit of a loner, but everyone wants to be friends with me at the moment. What is friend? <laughs> <laughs> uh, well, uh, friend Bob, you are the friend now of everyone. The major parties are trying to be your friend. You'll have 73 friends overnight if uh, you play your cards it's right. It's great to be independent, isn't it? It is great to be independent, uh, you know, going at your own pace, doing all the things you want to do. Yeah. Um, I think, Bob, the next week um, you'll have many, many friends, but also you'll have another 73-odd enemies as well. So. Do, you, do you think these independents are going to be uh, looking for a lot of personal gain out of this? I'm not sure. I was um, earlier when the election results were still unknown, I was saying it's a great time to move to these seats where the independents yeah. are because you'll probably have 45 swimming pools, <laughs> 28 new technical colleges and you know 28 trillion times the speed of light internet. Yeah. Um, so it could be part of the deal that these independents push for policy concessions that assist their local areas. Now, again, we'll have to see the fine points of the details that come out. A lot of them are asking for parliamentary reform. It seems like a very noble request. How likely is it to come through? It depends if they hold the balance of power, to what extent they hold the balance of power. Right. Um, both parties have indicated that they're interested in policy reform and parliamentary reform, um, extending the hours of question time, changing the rules so Dorothy Dix's can't be asked, you know, those sorts of questions where a backbencher gets up and asks the minister for something or other, how good is this government? and the minister then launches into a tirade oh, about how... thank you for that question. That's I'm glad that's... I had the opportunity to answer <laughs> that's right. that, that amazing question. Uh, so um, they're looking at changes for those sorts of things to make Parliament really more old school. In and actually what do it's... things, which would be great. To, to build on the notion of people conversing, ideas being exchanged. Dave from Moe asks, I literally voted for a donkey on Saturday. Why hasn't he been elected yet? <laughs> well, the donkeys do take some time to come into Parliament, um, so just wait, I would suggest, for him. In the meantime, he has a, a local Member of Parliament, um, and of course he's referring to the donkey vote, I presume. Well, I'm not sure. I think he thought he voted for a donkey. <laughs> I don't know how he did that. Maybe he added an extra box. I don't know. Um, it, it occurs, donkey votes are, of course, when people just go one, two, three, four, five, how yeah. many they go. Um, and it's interesting to note that uh, at this election, the donkey vote was okay, but the informal vote was slightly higher. Well, that's than the thing, because the donkey vote, I think, I don't know if people realise, the donkey vote is fine, because if you've numbered all the boxes, 
that still counted. That's fine, yeah. But the informal vote is when you leave out a box or you, you maybe you don't you don't make it clear who you're actually voting for. Or you write little threatening messages on the ballot paper, yeah. like um, you know, I hate you all, or uh, bring back Mickey Mouse, or those sorts of things. Right. Um, so they're the informal votes, and there's uh, apparently a, a move up. So they're around six percent at this stage. What do you have any insights into why that might have been? Was it the Mark Latham factor? Well. Interesting to mention Mark Latham, when Mark Latham was leader of the Labor Party in 2004, the informal vote had also gone up. Gosh, <laughs> so, it is the Latham factor. <laughs> so even when people were going to vote for Mark Latham, they were still voting informal. Now that he's come, <laughs> out, now that he's come out and said that vote informal, maybe there's a percentage of people that have followed his idea. We've got a faceless man from Croydon. I take my facelessness as a point of pride in, my, in the Labor Party. What's with all these powerful independents that have faces? <laughs> well, faceless man, um, what can I say to that sort of question? Um, perhaps What's the deal? <laughs> uh, firstly, how did his face become faceless? Well, I think he joined the Labour Party. Well, there we are. Clearly. Then he's one of the, one of the many faceless men. It, it brings out the issue of um, we've got now all these faceless men who really have faces... Uh, but they're not the powerful ones all of a sudden. It's, it's all these independents. People with faces. Yeah. So as much effort as they put into being faceless, those with faces have prevailed. Do you think the major parties are just wondering what's what now? Because, I mean, they used, they, they're so used to being like, it doesn't matter what happens, we're major. <laughs> the word, major, not minor, major. And now it's these independents. Are they just, like, confused out of hell? I think if it's that's confused. A uh, well, <laughs> I understood it. Uh, <laughs> I think it's confused a lot of people. It's confused everyone. We haven't had anything like this for 70 years where the major parties have not won the majority of seats. So what is occurring now um, is something that we haven't had since the end of the second, well, the start of the Second World War. It certainly hasn't occurred after the end of the, the war either. So it's really uncharted territory. And it just, we'll have to see how the major parties react. Um, possibly parliamentary reform is going to be one of the changes they make, but certainly, um, um, I, I really want to see what they're doing right now um, on on this stay <laughs> in terms of trying to get the numbers because it's all about the numbers. Yeah, it really is. Well, I think at this point, I think maybe everyone should just turn to a loved one, hug them, tell that they love them because who knows what's going to happen tomorrow. I think that's good advice. Sarah Gazarin, thank you so much for coming on the program. Thank you for having Thanks me. Thanks so much. Thanks.